Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Hairbrain Games. This is the weekly segment I do every few weeks to describe things in the industry that are of interest to me, and maybe, quite possibly, or possibly not, to you. Uh, summer is in its last throes, I am sad to say. I have enjoyed this reckless 90 degree heat. Now it's down into the 80s. So people are a little bit less melty than they used to be. Uh, I'm a heat fan. I'm one of the only ones in my neighborhood who likes the heat. Uh, but I'm, I'm cloud heaven anyway. Uh, I've been busy at work, so that's why I haven't done anything in the last couple weeks. Uh, but other than that, nothing's, nothing unusual. We've had a lot of new subscribers. I'm going to say a nice welcome to all of you. This is low-key, low-budget, fun talk about board games and... Uh, just general chit chat with some awesome people who subscribe and who I learn a lot from all over the world. Um, yeah, so with that, let's get to the news. All right, long ago, I played a game called Endeavor by two gentlemen who kind of disappeared off the industry after a while. I think they, one of them went into video gaming. Um, They've come back now with uh, another version of Endeavor called Endeavor Deep Sea. Uh, I played the original. I'm glad to see a new riff on it years later. Uh, even even now having a solo version because that's what the original did not. So awesome, awesome on that. In other news, uh, longtime subscribers will know that I'm always on the lookout for uh, board games meeting sports. And uh, very, very rarely am I pleased or content with how that goes. I just think it's really hard to map sports to, to board games. Uh, but someone else has given it a try. There's Hoop Gods, a head-to-head -head basketball game. It looks like you have your court, you have your players, you have actions, you basically try to score seven points or something. You know, naturally I remain suspicious, but... You know what? I'm going to buy it and try it anyway. Maybe they could surprise me. Ba baseball Highlights 2045 certainly did. So, in other news, there's a new game of Splendor called Splendor Duel. Now, Splendor plays fine with two players. So I've played tons and tons and tons of games of it two players. But this one adds some touches that make it more geared towards the dueling, I'm against you kind of affair. And so, it's been relatively positively received so if those of you who just can't get enough splendor in your diet check it out later this fall so a war of the ring card game is a uh, markedly different than war of the ring but by the same company and uh, initial reviews on that are relatively positive again it's a different game so uh, it plays two to four players different factions vying for control etc uh, looking forward to that, suspiciously, but optimistically. In other news, Imperium Horizons, for those of you who uh, know about the Imperium series, there's Imperium Classics, Imperium Legends, and now Imperium Horizons. Basically, it's one of the most complex civilization games disguised as a card game. Uh, it is absolutely cards it's card driven it's based on cards but don't let that fool you there's a lot of meat and meatiness in particularly to each civilization so i'm very excited this comes with, i think 16 new new civilizations so we're going to be we're going to be chock full now there's cory kaniskia has uh introduced a game called 3000 scoundrels this is an alternate wild west frontier setting uh, i know there's some poker and bluffing which poker and bluffing are kind of the same thing and, uh, and an unusual way of leveraging clear cards. So that's what I know about that. More exciting news, second most exciting news, is uh, Undaunted. Not only do they have Undaunted Normandy and Undaunted North Africa and, un and the uh, Undaunted Reinforcements, all of which I have, they've uh, also got Undaunted Stalingrad coming out this fall, which is an entirely different game with a higher price point and uh, not anything to do with the original, so you're not going to blend it with the others. Uh, but Undaunted Battle of Britain will be coming to us next year. So they're taking uh, the Undaunted series and style to the skies. I am excited. Uh, can't get enough Battle of Britain. Bob for the win. And finally, after many, many years, uh, one of the oldest games, dexterity games, that I still keep in my collection because it's out of print and I still love it is Ascending Empires. It is a game where you are flicking your ships 
it's not a wild, uh, it's not like flick em up where you're you know, wow all over the place. It is a true 4X, but you're using flicking for movement and for, for attacking. And uh, it was still a classic. I was waiting for them to reprint it, and they finally are. They're printing it again. This time they've done some research to, to handle some of the physical issues with the original, like the boards kind of being warped or being, you know, not, not necessarily being straight. Uh, they've got some real good ideas to make that game awesome. So should I sell my original copy? Oh, exciting times. Anyway, let's get to my question of the week. So here's a weird question that someone asked a while back, and I'm like, I had an answer for them, but it, a lot of times people don't think about it. But when you have a game collection that big, how do you protect it? How do you insure it? How do you make sure that, you know, if, if it gets hit by a meteorite, and it, you know, but at least your brain survives, how do you make sure that you, uh, you know, that, that you cover it? And that's actually a good question, and it's one that I, I went and did a while ago, because I know, you know, collections... You can generally, when people have collections, it's covered in insurance. But I wanted to know, like, do I have to get a special insurance policy for my board games? And uh, the answer was generally like no, but make sure you have a nice tracked list of those games. Sorry. Um, and so that was something I learned was that it's it didn't need a special policy addendum or anything. But when you have games in the thousands. Uh, you definitely, I, I still would, I, I wanted to ask the insurance company just to make sure that they had it on record that I asked about it and got an actual answer just in case. But, uh, you know, of course you're going to get, you'll get reimbursed. They won't be able to find, you know, the Atlantic Chase out of print, you know, and get it to you in a week if, you know, if you wind up with everything in your house destroyed and such so uh, but at the same time it's good to note them out and they they did say that like if you put your collection like on board game geek or whatever that that's about you know that's a valid a valid way to to track your game so for those of you who have large amounts of games or who are blessed to have large amounts of games uh, that's something to consider is like you know do i you know does that work maybe maybe my answer for my insurance policy was different but anyway something to think about um and again, it's it's a pretty good life when you're worrying about insuring that many board games. You you have a uh, you have a procurement uh, tenacity that I reflect and and uh, and emulate. Anyway, all right, let's get to my three games. All right, behind me. We have Sea of Legends, an app-enhanced slash driven game about narrative storytelling in the Caribbean. It has been out for over a year now, and they've just redone the app. Uh, not going to say it was a pleasant experience on rollout for me with that, which is why it's been a year and a half. But I'm giving it another shot, and I thought I'd let you know that that's one of the games that I may or may not be doing a review of with my fancy new machine back there uh, that hopefully will make make my life faster. I don't know. So anyway, then we have Caper. This is one that I got good vibes on from vibes on good uh, opinions on from uh, local local peeps, which is a it's a two-player dueling game where you're just trying to plan and masterfully plan the perfect heist in caper europe i have set it up i've i've messed around with it but i haven't tried it against a human opponent yet and that is kind of required if you're going to play a two-player game and finally we have an oldie but goodie i don't know if anyone remembers this but genesis empires and kingdoms of the ancient middle ages i have not done a good job of storing the components. I'm going to be redoing this one, and so I brought it out. But it's uh, it's an interesting point-to-point uh, -point kind of game dealing with really, really old, old empires, well before you and I were born. Um, so we've got uh, Hammurabi and Sargon, the Hittites, the Assyrians, the Sea Peoples, known as the Philippines, Philistines. Um, anyway, but uh, I plan to, to give it out and give it a whirl again. It, it just fell on the floor. Whatever. Let's move on. All right. And now we get to a brand new segment. I listened to your, to your voices. I know that many of you really liked my previous segment to end the week in, in, in games called uh, Tim Machine. Uh, I, 
I really struggled with what could possibly be an interesting s segment as well because that one had gone many years had gone on when I was doing that so I introduce you to the next segment okay so I I did listen and I I, that format, I liked the format of Tim Machine a lot. I, I just liked it. I'm one of those trivia on what this day in history kind of people. And so I decided, you know, I, I could either go back and redo it and just pick different things, which doesn't make a lot of sense when, like, the top story now is this from that year. Like, So I decided to go back and go, well, you know, there's more that went on every year than just the things I came up with. Some of those stories were a little bit, you know, like, I, I like they were... There was some darkness there. There were some things like the top story was not something you want to gleefully go, hey, you know what happened in 2020? Uh, so I decided let's go back and let's look at a little some of the more odd things in history. That's why I'm going to do Tumbleweeds of Time. We're going to take a few different categories in that same year, have a little fun with it, throw in a little board gaming wackiness, and call it good. So Tumbleweeds of Time. Let's roll, peeps. All right, famous birthdays of 1969, because we're going to do 1969. What was a famous birthday? Me. Ha <laughs> ha. And Linus, Linus Torvalds, uh, the second most famous Linus I believe there is, because he is the instrument of, uh, of the creation of Linux. Now, there was also Matthew McConaughey, Mariah Carey a tune sometimes, and Ice Ice Cube. Uh, but yeah, anyway, famous deaths. There weren't many famous deaths in 1969. I could, we could use a year like that again, Betty White. Uh, Judy Garland passed away in 1969, known for her famous role in uh, The Wizard of Oz. The popular slang. What was the popular slang term in 1969? It was, ew. Now, I would have thought, Valley Girl, ew, no, this predates that. It's actually known that ew became a thing in 1969, and no, it wasn't because I was born. Popular fad. The popular fad was kind of obvious. It was Woodstock. Uh, it changed the music and the world. It altered it pretty much in ways that still ripple through our lives. Uh, yeah, it's hard to imagine 400,000 people in a field, like, and the, the change that, that evoked, you know, for, for better or ill, that evoked from that. So, popular, popular pun. This was a popular pun in 1969. On July 20th, 1969, humans landed on the moon for the first time. We would have gone earlier, but the moon was full. All right, top song, Sugar Sugar. <laughs> and uh, then we get the weirdest story of 1969 was titled Be Prepared. In August of 1969, the Girl Stouts of America filed a $1 million lawsuit against Personality Posters Manufacturing Company, claiming that the company's poster of a pregnant girl scout in uniform, alongside the motto, Be Prepared, constituted wanton and malicious defamation. Um... The judge threw the case out, be noting that there was no evidence that had the poster had actually caused any damage to the reputation of the Girl Scouts. Be that as it may, how would I have rendered it? I probably wouldn't have made a poster out of that anyway. That's a little crass to me. Anyway, but hey, everyone's everyone. Popular board games in 1969. Not just popular. Well, let's go with popular or wacky. That's our category. Anzio is a uh, was a a game that dealt with uh, the Italian Peninsula during World War II and the fight back and forth for that. That one actually still holds its own pretty darn well. 53 years later, 52 and a half years later. Uh, that's pretty impressive. And the other one that holds up well is Monod. This is one of the games from the, from the famous Sid Saxon. Um, Monod is actually rated higher than Tiger Leader. Uh, but it's also rated higher than uh, Tapeworm the game from the 2020. And finally, the most important category of 1969. How many aardvarks lived in Antarctica in 1969? The answer? Zero. All right, that'll do it for this time. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Hairbrain Games. Music